What's going on guys, it's Jamie here and welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a Napoli rebuild where we see what their new striker signing Victor Oshimen, obviously the ultimate team future star that they've signed for a lot of money from uh, Real after a great season for them and I believe for Nigeria. Um, he's a top talent, he was highly touted around the world, there's a few teams in for him but Napoli have got him. Um, it's a bit of a weird one as they have quite a few attackers, especially a few strikers with uh, uh, Mertens and Singe plays up there sometimes now. You've got Milik, uh, Garente, but I believe Garente is being re released. Um, it's quite of, um, an interesting team because they finished 7th in the Serie A, which means they have no European football. Went through a few managers like Ancelotti, who's now at Everton. I think Gattuso is still there. If he's not there now, he was manager there for a while. Um... They got an abundance of right backs, a few players they should probably have in the squad that are out on loan. Uh, a very good midfield. They've lost Kyle Holland on a free transfer, I believe. You've got players here that probably aren't good to their potential, like Shalinsky and like Marco Rock, who's out on loan. Uh, I recall the players that um, should be back. I just have to wonder that one out on loan. Um, they haven't got a lot of balance on their left wing. They only seem to use uh, Insigne. Obviously, they bought Verde, then loaned him out straight away and have sold him straight away. Strange business. Um, obviously, Insigne is getting on a bit now, which means he's not going to have the pace forever. So, they're going to have to try and reinvest on that left wing. But the only problem is, there's not really anyone that matches matches this style of play they have. Um, the wing backs, for me, though, are the players I want to improve the most. So, you can see here, we get offer for Gulam, who's had his injury concerns with his knee. So it's probably time that uh, we sell him on for a good fee as well, to be fair, for a player that's had a lot of knee injuries. Um, it's probably time to reinvent the position a bit at Napoli. It's kind of had Hisaj and Gulan there for a few years now, and Mario Ruiz. Mario Ruiz is a very good backup, to be fair. Um, so my plan is to keep Rui there as backup for, well, the new left back that I bring in. Um, the right back position I'm still up in the air but I'm probably am gonna bring in someone but as you can see the big transfer deal of this thing is that Dries Mertens who's got a year left in his contract has left the club uh, Bailey Evancouz is coming with a very good uh, big bid and I just thought thank you for the memories Dries but it's time to go because the one problem with this Napoli team is it's getting up there in age. You need to try and rejuvenate the squad. And the first way I'm going to do this with the money from Dries Mertens is bringing Lucas Ding from um, Everton. Obviously, ex uh, Napoli manager Ancelotti. They haven't got any European football, whereas we can offer him that. Might not be able to offer him the same wages, but he's going to have a chance to play in Europe. Uh, live in Italy, which is a lot nicer than Liverpool, let's be honest. Naples is a nice place. Uh, more loyal fans, passionate fans. He might be able to play more about relying on his pace and more about his ability. He's a very good left back in real life, probably the most underrated one in the Premier League. So I think it's a very smart decision for Napoli to maybe go for him. Maybe the European football drags him away from Merseyside. Obviously, the money in real life is going to be an issue. This is just a game, so this is players that I would sign. You see me just uh, accept an offer for Callahan. Because he's not there here anymore. Uh, and to strengthen the midfield. As obviously losing Allen is a big risk at Napoli. He's, he's like their main midfielder. Uh, Danilo Pereira from Porto. Never really got his chance in Europe. No one's ever really fully come in. Because of uh, William Cavallo. William Cavallo obviously is the guy that everyone knows. And seems like Pereira is the understudy to that in uh, Portugal. And it's just never got his move. Obviously he's at a big club in Porto. So he might not want to move. Um, he'd be a very good player to play at the base of the midfield though. He's a solid anchor man, decent on the ball, can just ping the ball about quickly. Uh, to me, it makes sense if Allen on one side and you have Zielinski or Marco Fabian. I believe his Marco Fabian as the ever centre mid, the man who's played for Betis. Um, very good midfielder, probably not going to be a Napoli much longer if we're honest, but for now he's here. Uh, my backup for Lorenzo Insigne is going to be the ex-Chelsea man, uh, Jeremy Bogger. You can see him ship Buffon in real life on my one of my old videos on this channel from December. Um, 
But yeah, he probably deserves to make a step up. He had a very good season in the Serie A, to be fair, for a player who was uh, playing for a team that's not fantastic, let's be honest. That's probably just a mid-table team these days. So I think he deserves to step up. And Nunes is just not in my plans. It just He's younger than Nunes and he's the same rating. It just makes sense to maybe get Nunes go and use um, Jeremy Bogger. Um, as you see here, Nunes goes out on loan to Leicester. And then... A shock bit that I wasn't expecting was pair for Peter Zielinski from Barcelona. It took me a while to think about whether he's worth going. And eventually I thought, it's about time that he goes. Maybe just cash in on the 25-year-old. Uh, Barca, to be fair though, came in with a decent-sized bid of £32 million, And I thought, we'll spend half of that and replace him with Fred, who's more box-to-box, -box, a bit more active, a bit more... Um, a good at the press. I think he had 8.1 pressures again this season, which is very good. Um, obviously, he might be out of favour at United. I mean, I know he's out of favour at United. He got three, at least three midfielders ahead of him. And then he just doesn't seem to be able to cut it in the Premier League. When he gets pressed, he's scared on the ball. Luckily, in Italy, the pressing game is not so influential. So, it could be a smart option for Fred to get out of United while he still can, with a decent reputation. He is prepared to take a wage cut in the game in real life. He might take a wage cut, but he's not going to take as big as one as I offered here, which is 25 grand uh, deficit. Um, good player, though. He's solid. Good for backup. He agreed to be a backup. Um, and then the right finally decided to uh, take a shot at the right back, and I went to see Kike Setien again, and this time I went to buy a player from Barca, so the other way around. Uh, Nelson Semedo, obviously... Probably going to be out of favour at Barca with Ronald Koeman coming in. Uh, he deserves a new opportunity. He's not a bad right back. Hisai asked to leave. So I thought I'll offer Hisai plus uh, some cash to make it a bit cheaper. We'll get Hisai just the wages. That means you don't have four right backs at the club. And um, it's, to, to be honest, it's probably a good deal for both parties involved. Barca gets some money on a, new, a backup right back who's solid. Um... We get a first team player, and that's just about all we want. You see, an important player didn't even ask for crucial, which is uh, very good to be honest. Uh, we had to try and work out a wage structure that wasn't going to be insulting, but probably less than what he's on at Barcelona. You see, uh, he counter offered us, he didn't walk away, which I was very happy about. See on this little uh, screen video here that that's the starting team I went for this season. Milik asked to leave. So, I accepted a £35 million bid from Chelsea. He then left in January. Uh, that's us at the, pre at the middle season mark. Third in the league. Three points off AC Milan in second. It's been a very good start to the league for us. Better than the one in real life. Let's just say that. Uh, doing well in the Cup. We're in the quarterfinals. Got through to the round of 16 in the Champions League. Uh, came second in our group to Liverpool. Which is uh, pretty much expected. Got a horrible draw with Barcelona. Let's be honest. Um, are apparently our mates in this season. Uh, the individual stats for the midway through the season. Lukaku's miles ahead. Uh, Oshimen's there with nine. The new signing. He's having a decent start to the season. Got a lot of players in the um, in the uh, individual stats, which is nice to see. Uh, obviously, with Mirk going, we had to bring in a new striker. And I thought of Vlahovic from Fiorentina. A little step up for a bigger team. He's not going to be the main player. you got Lorente. I also recalled back Patania. To be our backup, which is useful because Osman did get injured towards the end of the season, so it was nice to have a decent cover who wasn't a youngster. And Lorente just hasn't got the legs anymore to be at every game. Uh, see a cheap three million pounds, I think for Hovic was uh, easy contract. Didn't expect the play all the time. Cheap wages of twenty grand a week, decent length. So we got him for a while. So if he develops, it's just money. Um, obviously, I believe he might have played for Serbia. I see him as like. A Milik archetype. He's he's tall like Milik. He's strong, decent finisher. It's nice to see. We'll see what he done at the end of the season. As we get to the end of the season table, we drop down to fifth, which isn't great. As two of the better teams have surged, we're not far off the Champions League. So we got the Europa League. In the cup, we were uh, knocked out by Torino in the quarters, which is not good to see. In the Champions League, as you expect, we lost to Barcelona, uh, the eventual winners. So congratulations to them. It is what it is. At least you lost to the winners, I guess. Lost 3-0 in aggregate, which isn't the most embarrassing scoreline. 
in the uh, individual stats, you can see we have a lot of players still up there. Awesome man, Insigne, uh, 31 goals between them, which is nice to see. But even Patanga is up there. Digne and Allen in there for assists. Marco Fabian. Marco Fabian had a lot of goals this season from midfield. I'm very happy with how he turned out. Uh, you can see our, our players' individual stats. A lot of players playing games. Dingy had a good season. Mario Root, when he came in, played very well. Kuro Bali, obviously we didn't lose him, which is nice. There was no bids for him either, which I was quite surprised about. If you want to see a video where Napoli lose Alan and Kuro Bali, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I'll make sure to bring that to you soon. Semedo, good season. Even Fred contributed well. Danilo Pereira played well. Alan, 9 goals, 9 assists in all comps. Very good. Marco Fabian, 18 goals, 7 assists. It's fantastic from the midfielder. Uh, you'll see now our attack had a lot of good numbers. But if you want yeah, so if you want to see me do we where uh, we lose Kubali, Kubali and Allen, uh, let me know. Drop me some suggestions you might think are realistic. And um, I'm gonna leave you with my short list now in the end of the player stats. For, and uh, I'll leave you go. Uh, thank you for watching. It's been Jamie. Hope you enjoyed and goodbye.